with any book in the Bible, you can get into complex levels of structuring, but I find it really helpful to have a simple view, not simplistic, but simple. And so what Mark gives us at a sort of helicopter view, a bird's eye view, is a, a three-part um, highlight reel, if you like. So the first verse, the beginning of the gospel of Jesus, the Christ, the Son of God. And so the reader is told from the start, this is who Jesus is. He's the Christ, he's the Son of God. But the people in the gospel don't get it. The demons get it and some desperate people get it, but the people who should get it don't get it. So his family don't know who he is. His disciples don't get what's going on. The religious leaders don't get it. And so there's this progression through the story where the first half of the book is just this confusion amongst the characters. Who is Jesus? Of course, as the reader, we're reading it. We know exactly who it is. It's the Christ, the Son of God, we're told at the beginning. And so the first half of the book is really answering that question, who is Jesus? Then we get to the midpoint. So in chapter 8, verse 29, Peter responds on behalf of the disciples. There's this key moment where Jesus is saying to the disciples, who do the people say that I am? Oh, some say this, some say that. Okay, what about you? Who do you say that I am? And Peter responds, you are the Christ. So there's the first of those two titles, now on the lips of the representative of the disciples. And immediately Jesus starts to talk about his death. As soon as Peter says, you're the Christ, Jesus says, the Son of Man is going to suffer. And he's instantly into this anticipation of the cross. And so there's a couple of things going on at that midpoint. First of all, why all the way through the first half does Jesus keep telling everybody to keep it quiet? He does a miracle and then tells the person who's healed, don't go and tell anyone, just keep it quiet, just keep it quiet. Well, I think it's because at this midpoint, once the disciples know he's the Christ, Jesus then says, okay, yeah, but you've got to get this too. You've not got the whole picture. Uh, just the miracles is not the whole deal. You've got to know that to have the Christ, you've got to get the cross. And so from that point on, he starts predicting the cross. And so in the second half of Mark's gospel, you kind of have this follow-up question. Who is Jesus? That's being revealed all the way through. In the second half, what does it mean to follow him? What it means to follow him is to take up our cross and follow him. And so his cross is really critical. So we begin with this declaration at the start, Jesus, the Christ, the Son of God. The Christ gets declared at the midpoint, chapter 8, verse 29. And then at the end in chapter 15, verse 39, as Jesus dies on the cross, the person who stood the closest to the cross, who has the clearest view, the Roman centurion, says, surely this man was the Son of God. And so I think once you see that little progression there, it helps you to see the book in two halves and to recognize the two big questions, who is Jesus and what does it mean to follow him?